the substitute and representative of mankind. And remember I read uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. It says that, that we have to die for our own sins. We have to pay for our sins. Or we have to have somebody who's a substitute. So Christ had to come in this bios condition that I'm in and qualify to be a human being, to be this bios. The law of God will not allow an innocent man to die for a guilty man. Other non, when other non-Christian religions look at us, they, 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 they don't get that. They balk at it because we claim that Christ, who was innocent, he died in place of the guilty. The problem is solved when you realize that the divine, that the divinity of Christ was joined to the corporate humanity. He and we became one. And because he became one of us, and he became the last out, he was legally qualified to represent us. We should be able to express that to the non-Christian world because they have a hard time with the gospel of Jesus Christ that that he did place that he did in place of us. The rest of humanity has trouble understanding it and, and believe. I mean, look at God came and and it, and and he's doing what the unbelievable. He's doing uh, the incredible. He's taking responsibility for the human race and. We're trying to keep the law to be saved. Let's go to uh, perfect obedience could not cancel our sins. Since the law demands the death of the sinner. The law, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but we're, we don't keep the law to be saved. But the law is a standard for Christian for Christian living. That's not to say is we're keeping it to be saved. It's we're keeping it because, it, I mean, do we steal? I mean, the Ten Commandments is in our hearts. It's, it's not just listed in, in, in this book. It's, it, it's in our hearts. Do we, do we commit adultery? Do we lie? Why? Because God has instilled it in us. So we need to be clear that no one's going to be saved by the works of the law. The good news is in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. There is two things that Christ did for corporate humanity to save us. He obeyed the law perfectly, and He met the justice of the law. He did that by going to the cross, by surrendering His life at the cross. Go to uh, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And most, uh, all, most of us know this verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So on the cross, our corporate bias life, Christ assumed this life. That life did not belong to him. The, the, the corporate bias life did not belong to Christ. He assumed it at the incarnation. The life that really belonged to him was that Zoe life. 
And that human life that belongs to us died in Christ. Now this is where it really where you really got to think about this. Uh, on the cross, when Christ died, what part of Christ died? The bios. Very good, Dad. Somebody's paying attention. The bios part died in in Christ. Could the Zoe, could divinity die? No. So, when it says I am crucified with Christ, what does that mean? The bios in me is crucified. I, it says I am, this is, this is a, a, a shared crucifixion. It says I am crucified with Christ. So by faith, the Son of God lives inside of me. My bios, the part that Adam gave me, the curse that Adam gave me, the, the condemnation that Adam gave me, died on the cross with Christ. If you think about that, it makes so much sense. Because God, God has given us this Zoe life, and, and why we don't have this Zoe life is because the same reason Israel didn't have a Zoe life. Because God said, I'm giving this to you. I'm going to make you a special people. And did they believe it? I mean, we can look at history and see that, that, that they, they don't believe it today. They're over there at the wailing wall doing one of these numbers. And I'm not making fun of them. It's a shame. I, 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 because they, they need to go and see... Well, where they missed the boat 2,000 years ago. So just like Adam's sin was a corporate sin that affected the whole human race, Christ's death was a corporate death. A collective death that applied to the entire human race. That's why you can say, for God so loved the world that He gave His Zoe his life. The difference is what Adam did for us we inherit. And what Christ did for us is a gift to be received. You have to receive this gift. A gift is not, when if, if somebody walked up to me and handed me it and I reached out and grabbed it, that would be, that's the gift I'm talking about is you don't even have to reach out and grab it. He has given this gift to the human race. You and I have died in Christ the wages of sin. So at the cross, by faith, I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20. That's the good news. When the law says you are not good enough, or, or Satan says you're not good enough to be saved, you deserve to die. We can say yes. I am the chief of sinners, but I died in Christ. You're dead. That's what Ray used to say. He still says it sometimes. He says, you're dead. In Christ, we are dead. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We should be the happiest people on planet Earth. Because our sin is no more. Christ paid for it. Past, present, and future. If you cause a little sin tonight, you're not unsaved. You, but if you practice sin, you need to, to question your uh, salvation. You need to say, well, have I accepted Christ in my heart? That's why we are called to examine ourselves. If, we're, if we sin, that doesn't put us out of Christ. That doesn't change us back to bios. It don't work that way. You're either zoe or bios. But you can walk away. God says you can walk away. Don't get me wrong. You can't walk away from it. In exchange, the Father gave the, the Zoe life of His Son to the human race. And we've discussed uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. So what exactly did He give? The Son, the life of the Son of God in the resurrection. That's what God has given us. And I found that page in this 
I was dig it all over the place. I can just pull it out. Okay, this is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 to 11. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. So this is Paul's last letter before he was executed. This is the letter, the second Timothy, the second letter to Timothy. He was killed after this letter. Uh, it says, Nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings through God. So, we discussed this in Sabbath school. We are going to have suffering. For the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us. So, it says, who has saved us? That's past tense. We have already been saved. Were we saved when we accepted Christ? Or were we saved before the foundation of the world? Amen. I mean, we can say that we were saved at the cross 2,000 years ago, and we just found ourselves. We, we, if we were saved three weeks ago, then we could say that I discovered my salvation three weeks ago. But the ultimate salvation is going to be when Jesus comes back and we're glorified. Then we can never be lost. That's the ultimate salvation. So, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before, when? Before time began. So before time began, God already knew what was going to happen. That's why He calls us the everlasting gospel. Even before God created mankind in Adam, says He already planned our salvation for eternity. This is the incredible good news. God saved us before time began. Mm. Verse 10, But has now been revealed by the appearing of the Savior Jesus Christ. Two things He died. Excuse me. Two things He did. He abolished death. If He has abolished death, why do Christians die? You're supposed to say, Christians don't die. Christians go to sleep. We don't die. Uh, death is, it, what, what did Christ abolish? The wages of sin. It's the second death. Christ abolished the second death for Christians. I mean, it sounds like for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish. God did His part. What is our part? To believe. The only thing that you're going to be put in the fires of hell to be burned up and destroyed is because you didn't believe. Because of unbelief. That's, that's the only sin that's going to destroy you. Let's see. <coughs> uh, still in verse 10 it says, And brought life, which is the Zoe life, and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Which where Paul wrote this letter. In the resurrection, <clears throat> Christ and the human race share the same Zoe life. Amen. Amen. If we look at uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11, for both... He who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all one. For, this, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. And we'll jump down to 1 John 5, 11 and 12. And this is the testimony. It's, this is the record. That God has given us eternal life. He has given us the Zoe. And this Zoe, this life, in it, is in his Son. He who has the Son, this is the believer, has life. Zoe. He who does not have the Son of God, this is verse 12, does not have life. Does not have Zoe. He still has bio. He, the person that still has bio's life, will end up in the lake of fire, which is the second death, but he does not have Zoe. Most assuredly, this is John 5, 24, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. That's the Zoe. And shall not come into 
judgment, but is passed from death unto life. And that's Jesus' words from John chapter 5, verse 24. Can you see why this study is important? I mean, it's kind of drawn out and strung out, but you got to go through a lot to get from, from here to here. <clears throat> Object, can, <clears throat> objectively, this took place in Christ, all this. Subjectively, it is experienced by faith. Subjective facts of the gospel, which is experienced by faith, it is how I allow the objective facts of the gospel to change me or sanctify me. In the resurrection, Jesus and mankind share the same Zoe life. This is the incredible good news of the gospel. So the entire human race, according to Romans 5.18, if we go back to Romans 5.18 briefly, Therefore, as though one man's offense, judgment came to all men. We have we decided that this one man's offense was Adam, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all all men. And for the, my last verse, and this is where I got my uh, the title for my sermon, is in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. So this, this gift that God has given each one of us, is indescribable. There are no human words that we can say that can express our heart appreciation for what God has done for the human race. God has done for us what we could never do for ourselves. I pray that your response, that your response to God is thanks be to God. That He has done what He has done for the human race.
thank you so much for allowing us to come into your house today. I pray that you would help us to uh, learn the message that you want us to learn, that you would use us to rescue the souls of men, because there are so many that don't know you, Lord. We want to be used of you. We pray that you would bring people into our lives this week, and that we can be your witnesses to this lost and dying world. And Lord, we want to hear these words from you. Well done, my good and faithful servant. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.